Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you've been able to join us via Zoom or Facebook Live. And uh, we spend the first 10 minutes before service in meditation. So we're going to take this opportunity right now to just get still. So I invite you in whatever setting you're in right now, wherever you're seated, to just sit in a way that you can allow your body to relax, but at the same time, you know, maybe sit up with your spine erect and yet relaxed so you don't have the tendency to nod off, to close your eyes. And in this time, we allow ourselves to free ourselves of thoughts of the past or the future to just bring our awareness into the present moment. And we use the tool of the breath, focusing on the breath as a way to stay anchored in the present moment. And if it helps you, you might want to say to yourself, breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out as you exhale. And the mind has a tendency to want to wander off. That's perfectly natural. And this is an opportunity to really cultivate that part of us that can simply observe without judgment. And so when you notice that the mind has wandered, just observe. Just notice and maybe label what's going on. I'm thinking, hearing, feeling. Just some simple label to just notice what's happening. And then with great compassion, very gently, bring your awareness back to the breath, breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your body. Be aware of your setting, of whatever is supporting the weight of your body right now. Maybe wiggle your toes and your fingers, shrug your shoulders, just to come back into this present moment. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service. A special welcome to those of you who joined us during the meditation. Let's begin our service now with our opening chant, led by our fabulous Tina Meeks and Sam Krieger. Thank you, Tina and Sam. So let's take this opportunity now to anchor those words in our consciousness as we turn attention inward and join in prayer. To know that absolutely God is in this place because God is the only true power. It is the one life, the one infinite invisible, infinite intelligence infinite joy, infinite beauty, wholeness, and every form of goodness we can imagine and experience, infinite love, out of which all creation comes into being and that lives and moves and expresses itself throughout all that is, including through and as me, including through and as each and every person gathered for this virtual service, including every being everywhere. Knowing that God is in all places and things always unfolding throughout creation, I know that God is unfolding throughout our time together this evening, that we have been brought together feeling that impulse of the divine for a greater knowingness, a greater experience, a greater realization of itself through each of us. And we've honored that impulse, and I know that we've said yes to the divine and therefore it says yes right back and that every part of this service supports that intention for us to awaken to the truth of our divine essence. I know that God is present as the love that binds us. God is present as the love and inspiration and service, the givingness of each person who's of service this evening. It is. God that flows through Sam and Tina to uplift us through their music. I know that the message that has been revealed through me has been the message that all of us, myself included, have come to hear and know and absolutely embody at some deeper level. And I so, so I know that every part of our service 
awakens us to the divine in and around us. And I'm so grateful for that, grateful for every blessing we receive in this time together and in gratitude. I release this word knowing it is already so. I let it be. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. So now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice Thank you.
<laughs> God is in the house. Thank you, thank you, Tina. How many times over the years have I asked you to sing in the garden? A while back, we decided, okay, let's give it a rest. Well, that was a resurrection. <laughs> thank you so much. Hmm. So, what am I talking about this evening? Moving through and beyond. I think that we would all probably agree that the human experience as we move through life, we inevitably encounter challenges along the way that you know life has its ups and its downs, hopefully more ups than downs. But I really don't know anyone that hasn't at some point encountered some great challenge or difficulty in their life. Um, I know in our practical mysticism class that I'm teaching right now, last night's theme was the dark night of the soul. And I think probably all of us have gone through some kind of dark night of the soul moment, moment that was really, really difficult, uh, physically or emotionally, or both painful. And what we teach in Science of Mind is that we're all awakening to the truth that we just heard Tina sing about so eloquently, that we are God's own, that we're one with God, but in ways that we haven't yet awakened and that we feel separate from God, we create and experience negative conditions in our lives and in the world. Now, when people are first drawn to teachings like Science of Mind, to New Thought teachings, I think a big draw is this idea that if we're experiencing difficulty, that can all be changed, that it's just something that we need to shift in our consciousness. And the more we open our hearts and minds to the truth that God's goodness is ever present in us, around us, the more we can manifest, we can bring forth greater good into our lives. So we certainly emphasize that there is a way for us to experience good or make good of every situation because God is always there. But we don't, and I think this is really important to get, we don't deny that challenges are likely to arise in our lives, and we don't deny the pain and suffering that sometimes accompanies them. As much as we might want to manipulate things out there uh, with our you know, affirmative thinking, uh, we might want to circumvent any kind of difficulty in life, we will likely need to face and move through difficulties at different points in our lives. And what's important in this is the consciousness, the mindset, the thoughts and beliefs, our perceptions that we bring to these challenges is the key to whether we remain stuck in the suffering or move through and beyond our difficulties. So, you know, when we're talking about challenges, I, I would boil it down to a challenge is anything in our lives or in the world that isn't unfolding in the way that we would consciously choose for it to unfold. And the degree of discomfort that such challenges bring up ranges from negligible to excruciating. The degree to which we suffer is directly correlated to how we're perceiving the situation in terms of our ability to deal with it. If it's something that we weren't expecting and, and didn't want, but what are we perceiving in terms of our ability to deal with it? And, you know, life sometimes presents us some powerful lessons, but they don't always have to be in, you know, big dramatic ways. This principle of, you know, the consciousness that we bring to a situation and moving through a challenging situation was made so clear to me several years ago when on two different occasions I knocked, I was unconscious, I knocked something off the kitchen counter that spilled all over the floor. Now, those aren't the only two times I've done that. I'd like to say they were, but it's happened other times. But these two events happened within, I think it was maybe a week of each other. 
And it was so interesting in terms of the two different responses that they elicited in me. So the first time, I, I'm sure I remember feeling annoyed. I mean, when we knock something off and it spills all over the floor, we rarely go, oh, good, how fun. Um, well, I, I, I doubt I reacted that way. I most likely let out a sigh, possibly rolled my eyes, might have exclaimed something like, seriously? Um, I do remember I was on a timeline. I needed to get to an appointment. But I immediately had a sense of, I can deal with this. I had just gotten a new vacuum cleaner. And I went and got the vacuum cleaner out and immediately started vacuuming up what was on the floor. Actually was pretty grateful for the vacuum cleaner and amazed at how, what a great job it was doing. So this was kind of turning out to be, oh, how cool. And I managed to move through that, put the vacuum away, get on my merry way, and actually had enough time to get to my appointment. So I actually left that experience feeling grateful for being able to handle it and um, feeling pretty positive. The second time, I think if you had been watching me, you would have thought that one of the greatest calamities that could ever happen to a person had just happened. Um, my thoughts, when we, we talk in Science of Mind that heaven and hell are states of consciousness, well, I went straight from feeling okay to in hell with my thoughts about, you know, all the berating thoughts of how could I have done that? That just happened, you know, about a week ago, you know, all the things of how stupid, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in my defense, one of the things that was different about the second time is the first time it was fairly solid material, easy to vacuum up. The second time it was one of those bags of stevia where it's not in packets and stevia is like very powdery. Okay, so no fun. It was all over the place. It actually probably would have taken me a minute, maybe 90 seconds longer to clean that up than the first time. So you can understand that this is dramatic. <laughs> I would guess that I probably spent as much time walking around, being upset with myself, just kind of spinning in circles, resenting the situation, inwardly cursing, only inwardly because I do have two parrots, and you know, I've learned not <laughs> to do a lot of that outwardly. And eventually, I went and got the vacuum and very begrudgingly, you know, vacuumed things up. What was the difference? What was the difference? Okay, yes, the stevia, that was one. But in the first situation where I was momentarily annoyed, I felt the ability to make good uh, of the situation and move on. After a brief moment, I felt the impulse to solve the situation and moved in the direction of the solution versus rehashing and resenting the problem, reliving it, and berating myself for what had happened. In the second scenario, I lost my sense of that potential to handle the situation, to deal with it. Somehow, this situation, this stevia all over the place, was a calamity that I felt I couldn't handle. The situation in the world felt bigger than what I could deal with. Now, I realize when we're talking about moving through life's challenges, if that's the worst scenario I can come up with for a challenge that I have had to walk through in my life, um, I probably have no right to stand up here and give a talk on moving through and beyond challenges. But the thing is, yes, I have had far, far more difficult situations to face in my life. But you know what? Principle is principle. The same principle that applies to a relatively easy challenge is one that can be applied to our most difficult ones. And the idea is that as much as we'd like to circumvent problems and challenges, they are likely to come our way. Some may feel much larger 
than others. However, the more we have cultivated a sense of God's essence in us, being infinitely greater than any issue, any condition, any situation that we face in life, the more we'll be oriented toward healing and moving toward the solution. It doesn't mean we won't experience pain, suffering in light of the end of a relationship, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the health, a health or a financial crisis. It doesn't mean that we won't, for some period of time, feel some pain and suffering around that. But when we have a sense of the essence of God's love, God's wholeness, abundance, goodness and intelligence as greater than the situation and that we have access to that because we are one with that presence. Even in the midst of the pain, it brings a sense of comfort. It brings a sense of this too shall pass. There's a way to move through this. You know, we have this wonderful saying, don't tell God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big God is. You know, God in you is bigger than any challenge that you face. When we have a sense of that, then we automatically are oriented toward moving toward the healing, the revealing of something good, as opposed to remaining stuck in our resentment, in our hurts, in our sense of overwhelm of the problem, and rehashing how awful it is over and over and over again, which prevents us from moving forward. I know you've heard Dr. Mark and I you know, say many times, the saying in the 23rd Psalm is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, that we don't pitch a tent, we don't look for a motel room, we don't see if we can invest in some property, you know, we try to move forward. We look at moving forward. And you know, this discussion came up in our practical mysticism class. And one of the things that came to me is I think the brilliance of the 23rd Psalm is a statement that the reason I can walk through is because thou art with me. That there is a sense of in the middle of this, God is with us. What I think we all were moved by in Tina's song in the garden is that idea of God is always there walking with us. God is actually the essence that is moving us toward the greater good. So when we have a sense of that, we can say, yes, I'm experiencing grief, anger, perhaps desperation. There are times that we experience desperation, but if I have a sense there's a presence in and around me that's greater, as I align with that, it walks with me, it talks with me, it shows me the way out and beyond. And that's what all our spiritual practices help us to remember. It's all our spiritual practices are to help instill that sense in us that God is what is most true and most real about each and every one of us. That God nature is always there, will always be there. In times when challenges feel especially painful, I think it's important for us to give ourselves frequent reminders. Yes, we do our daily spiritual practice. We get still, we meditate, we pray, we affirm, we read things that are inspirational. You know, we try to be of service to f activate that part of us that can still give. But I think it's important for us when we're really, really going through a, a painful or difficult time is to take moments to just simply breathe, just to stop and breathe and release tension. If you do that, if you just take a breath, a slow conscious breath and release it, don't you almost immediately feel some sense of relief? That's 
that essence, that intelligence of God's nature in us that's always there to move us into a state of homeostasis, into well-being. Reminding ourselves a simple phrase like, this too shall pass with regard to the problem because the problem is temporary. God is permanent. The problem is temporary. God is permanent and eternal. And we should focus periodically on that part of us that seeks to feel better. That's when we say, thou art with me, because that part of us that's looking for the way out is God's nature in us that is seeking that greater knowingness and expression of itself through us. And we should take time to imagine being through the issue and allow ourselves to feel what that would feel like. What qualities of God would we experience more when we get through this situation? Because the fact that we can feel that is we're feeling that vibration of God in us, that, that presence that is always with us no matter what. And it is the thing that is going to move us forward. These simple steps keep us aligned with that essence of God that's infinitely greater than any human challenges and moves us through and beyond them. So let's take a moment to just do that together. So I invite you to bring your awareness to any challenge or difficulty that's causing you some form of suffering something that you're resenting or just not even wanting to deal with. And when you think of that, whatever energy comes up as you think of the problem, it probably is causing some form of tension somewhere in the body, some tightening somewhere. Try to become aware of where that tension is. When you think of that problem, where do you tense up? And now take a breath. And as you breathe out, just relax that area. Just try to stay open and relaxed. Hear the words, this too shall pass. Feel whatever degree of relief that this brings you and realize that's the divine wholeness in you. That's that intelligence in you that's always there to bring you back into a state of well-being. God is right there. Thou art with me. And now bring your awareness to the part of you that seeks to feel better. And notice what aspect of God's nature would you experience once this problem is behind you? Will it be greater love, greater peace, greater health, wholeness, abundance? And again, notice that as you can imagine and feel that, that is God's essence in you untouched by the problem. As you open to it, it reveals the pathways to resolution. Thou art with me. God walks with you, talks with you, tells you, you are God's own. And know that through this very simple process that we've just done, you've already started to move through and get beyond the challenge. And so from this place, let us join together in knowing the truth about some of the common challenges that are experienced along the human journey. 
remembering that that one life, that one power, that one infinite love, intelligence, and creativity of God is the life of all. Knowing that it is in each and every one of us, let us know that wherever there is any, ch any challenge whatsoever around change, around things changing in the world, that the world is constantly in flux, but the eternal nature of spirit is unchanging. And so wherever that is being experienced, wherever there's any discord around that, any unsettled feeling, we know the greater truth, that God is there to be experienced in a new way, that God is eternal, that in God we stay connected, even with those who leave us from this earth plane into the next dimension. We're always one with the one, and there's always a new way to experience it. Let us know that for those who are experiencing any physical or emotional ailment, that God is that vibration of health and well-being that when we align with it, shows us the pathways into wholeness, our true nature. And that well-being is established, that every ailment has a solution and that solution is being revealed. Let us absolutely remember that that nature of the divine is one that is always seeking to give of itself, and each of us is imbued with unique talents, ways to give of the nature of God, and that as we remember that truth, those who are feeling unfulfilled are guided to their perfect right places to give of their unique talents and gifts and to be valued. And this one vibration of the divine is infinite, and therefore, in God, there is no lack. And so where humanly there's any experience of lack, we bring the life, light of truth, of God's abundant nature, God the infinite giver-receiver that is in everyone, dissolving those illusions of lack and limitation such that we can all experience that greater capacity to give and take in graciously and let us remember together that the core nature of this one life is love. And as we remember and align with that vibration of love, we are moved into greater experience of love for ourselves and for others. And as such, we are allowing God to reveal more and more of itself through us. And so knowing that that nature of love is always for some greater good, let us honor it by setting our own individual intentions for good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, whether it's good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us just absolutely know that the impulse we're feeling is God's impulse for more and more of itself to be known and felt and realized throughout creation. So God is right there, and as we know that truth, God, goodness, is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all pathways to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with just absolute gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Yes.
Thank you, Tina. So this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so uh, you have the opportunity right now, if you see the link, you can donate online at nhcrs.org forward slash give. Uh, if you would like to use texting to send your donation, you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. And we will be in the church office after the service for 20 to 30 minutes if you would like to call in and give a donation via credit or debit card. But however you choose to support us, once again, just thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to support this church so we can be here to do this work together. So as we feel that vibration of giving. Let's put our hands to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say, Thank you again, Tina. So as we bring our service to a close, I'd uh, like first to um, thank everyone who's of service this evening. Uh, out there in virtual land, thank you to practitioners Gail Pilot and Bob Lyon, who are holding vigil for us this evening. On Zoom, thank you to Barbara Berg, Alma Alvarez, and Ray Regan. Thank you so much for your support. and. On Facebook Live, Liz Racy. Thank you, all of you out there. We couldn't be doing this without you. And as for the team in here, once again, Adam, thank you so much for lighting us and make sure, making sure we're heard. To our tech team here, Doreen and Blair. And thank you to Brenda and Nikki, who are here monitoring the cameras, make sure all of that's in order. What can I say, you guys? <laughs> Tina, once again, thank you. Thank you so much. Last time you were here, you sang We Have a Dream. That was it. And then, and so you did the two songs from my ordination, which I feel so special. <laughs> and Sam, as always, thank you. Thank you. Just perfect for tonight's message. Um, 
And we have a few announcements. Uh, oh, and by the way, thank you to all of you for being with us. Um, you know, I could just get up here and talk to a camera, but it feels good knowing there are others who are watching. <laughs> so, um, reminder that you can uh, make donations over the phone after the service if you'd like to call us with a credit or debit card. And the number is 818 762 7566. Or you can go online to nhcrs.org forward slash give or use the text option uh, texting the word give to 818 457 3419. Please know that Prayer with the Practitioner is available on Zoom after the service. So uh, if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website, connect to the Zoom. Site. If you would like a practitioner to pray one-on-one -on -one with you in a breakout room, you can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office in option four on the menu allows you to leave a voicemail with your prayer request. And we check those emails and voicemails every evening and they are sent out to all of our practitioners so you can count on being supported in prayer. Uh, next Wednesday is the first Wednesday of the month. Um, therefore, uh, well, every other month, and it is the other month where we will be having our Tese service. So meditation starts at 6.50 p.m., uh, as it does here uh, normally, and service begins at 7. If you've not joined for a Tese service, it's such a treat. Um, the evening begins with a musical meditation, followed by, um, well, same, same as what we have before our Wednesday service here with Dan Rose's music in the background, followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien uh, leading us for the evening. I'll be joining her. Uh, it's an hour of sacred readings, meditation, and chants. And Joanne just has such a beautiful job leading it. Hope you can join us for that. Our grief support group meets on Zoom this coming Sunday. This group is facilitated by practitioner, practitioner, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winnegar. Um, that's at 1 p.m. And all who are going through any kind of grief, it's, I know people think it's always about the loss of a loved one. It could be any kind of loss that you're going through a grief process. We invite you to join. Carol is really masterful at leading that and um, exciting news is that we'll be having our NHCRS spring concert on Zoom Friday, March 12th at 7.30 p.m. And you're invited to join for a wonderful evening of songs and celebration with the sensational soloist Bill A. Jones and our very own Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. Um, you can find out all the details on our website, nhcrs.org, and you can also get your tickets, which are $30. You can purchase those online or call the office if you're not able to do that online. Zoom virtual patio, before and after all of our services, you can join in and visit with congregants 20 minutes before or hang out after the services. Our men's group, uh, did not meet this past Sunday because of our annual meeting, but they will be meeting this coming Sunday. Um, and that's at 11 a.m. to 11.30. And all men are welcome to that. And every morning, Monday through Saturday, we have our meditation from 8 to 8.15. All these events, anything you want to know about uh, that's going on at our church, nhcrs.org. You can also sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. With that, let's wind this up by joining together in prayer one more time. Hmm. What deep gratitude I feel for all the ways that Spirit has revealed itself to us and through us this evening. I just give thanks knowing that during this time, maybe in ways we don't even realize, healing has occurred, shifts in consciousness have occurred that allow for a greater experience and expression of that nature of God 
that is what is most true and real about each and every one of us. And so I give thanks for all the blessings, knowing that they continue to multiply as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Thank you once again for being with us this evening. Let's wrap up our service with our chant led by Tina. Say.